All right, so last week we talked about what is salvation. If anybody, can anybody give me a short description, a simple sentence of what is salvation? The act of being saved. The act of being saved, all right? So if you put that into Christianity, what does that mean? <clears throat> saved from hell. Okay, the act of being saved from hell. Everybody okay being with saved that? Saved from yourself. Saved from yourself. Saved from yourself, okay. Any other scholars in the room? You might have a say on it. Let us say something. <laughs> Alright, so what is salvation? Salvation is yes, the act of being saved from the wrath of God, from hell, from yourself, uh, your sins. Saved and given eternal life. Uh, you're saved. Um, we went through a lot of stuff last week. Uh, and we went through uh, one thing. We had a uh, um, we had a uh, what was it? An equation on the board. And we were trying to figure out this equation. And I don't know if you remember. We did what plus what equals no, plus what salvation? It's three of them. <laughs> no, that was three of them. It's three. Oh, that's right. What plus what? Plus that's one right. Equals salvation. All right, so anybody remember? It was a really tough believe, equation. Believe. Wait, wait, hold on. Let's ask people who are here. Ah, Sione. Believe the first one. All right, let's, <laughs> let's ask Sione. All right, Sione, what do you think? I'm guessing the first one is believe. <laughs> He's good. He's good. All right. He's saved already. What do you think? <laughs> Honest opinions. We had a lot of weird answers last time. Are you asking the second one or the one? Yeah, what's the second one? Faith. All right, believe plus faith, aren't they the same thing? Nope. Nope. All right, well, I'm going to put it right here. <laughs> All right, what else? <coughs> Sounds like we're not sure. How do you know? No. Okay, yes. It okay. Was believe, repent, plus nothing. Okay. Carla put see. repent. I'm going to put that right here. That means no. Uh, <laughs> no. No, it's an A word. Well, think about a scripture. Okay, what scripture would help us define this? Because I, I told you guys one thing I thought growing up was this. Uh, faith plus church plus baptism. Plus baptism. Plus no pork <laughs> equals <Or> salvation. Pork. <laughs> All right, that was that was my that was my uh, equation for salvation. As long as I kept those, I'm good. What about believe, confess, plus nothing? All right, I'll I give. Like, I'm gonna give you the answer. Faith plus grace. Oh. <laughs> Nothing equals salvation. All right, that was the one that's tough. All right, that was tough. I, I had a pastor told me that one time, and the, where where it's all derived from is Ephesians two eight. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing; it's a gift of God. All right, so it says faith plus grace plus not a thing you could do equals salvation. All right, and of course that's a loaded kind of question because then we think about well I don't have to ever obey any of the laws I don't have to do a thing I'm good we're going to talk about that later but for now this is this is your equation if you're wondering how to get to this I'm no mathematician but this is the biblically all right so let's move forward if you have any complaints complain to Josh on YouTube thank you uh, today we're going to be talking about can we have assurance of salvation I know we touched on it but I figured before we get into the deep stuff, we need to just be sure of this, because the next part is we're going to understand why. All right? Can we have assurance of salvation? That one we're going to settle today. Okay? Today we're going to settle it. We read a, a verse last time in 1 Peter where it says, Diligently work hard to be sure of your salvation. Work hard to know um, 
and today we're going to talk about it. So can you know for certain that you will not be condemned on Judgment Day and without a doubt spend eternity with Jesus? All right, and right now at this moment, does Julia know for certain that when she dies and stands before God and he opens up her past, her Instagram feed, her Snapchats, <laughs> her Facebook, her internet uh, history, her, and everything she's ever thought about, you know, everything she's ever done, when he looks at all that, is she certain she's going to get into eternity? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and that's a question everyone here is going to have to answer by the end of the class, okay? That's right, that's your homework. <laughs> all right, so can you, so the act of being saved is that when you stand before the throne of God, Jesus his promises to, promise to you is that He will save you. He, he is your salvation. He's paid the price. And salvation for us, the assurance we have is that we trust that He's, that he's not lying. You know, that He's going to actually do it. Alright, can we be sure? Alright, so let me just give you a scenario. Okay? So, somebody goes to a church. Alright, let's say Bethel Church. Okay, let's use another one. Uh, any church, <laughs> or any church, they, they, they're listening to a message. The pastor is preaching, and he shares the gospel. Jesus died to save your sins. And this person says, I want that. The pastor gives an altar call. Anybody wants this, come up right now. This person, said, you know, and he, he's, a, he's a gangster. He's murdered lots of people. He sold girls into slavery, sex slaves. He's killed lots of Sureños. He's killed lots of the Crips. Everything. He just killed everybody. And he even he's you know he's a drug dealer in several different states, uh, wanted all over the place. And he's Hawaiian. I mean, <laughs> bad dude. Okay. <laughs> all right. So. Um, he hears the gospel, and he wants to be saved. So the pastor gives him the invitation. He walks up, and the pastor <coughs> prays this prayer with him. And, you know, who knows what he says, right? Uh, hopefully we have an idea. He says a prayer with him, uh, the sinner's prayer. Let's say Romans 10, 9 and 10. They say that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died and rose, uh, you'll be saved. Um, so he says, he says that, I believe, I repent of my sins, I confess to you. Boom! Alright? Uh, is that all the per purse? Is that all that he needs to do to be saved? Is that it? If he truly believes it, then yeah. Okay. We got if he one. truly believes it, he's going to live a life differently. <sighs> okay. That's the smartest thing I've ever heard Josh say. All right. Anybody else? No, but really, I didn't. I like was tuning him out. Can you say it again? Oh, okay. <laughs> she, she just. She, she naturally tunes. <laughs> 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 oh no, Josh. <laughs> no, I said if he if he truly believes it, then it is then yes, because his life is going to reflect that after. Okay. All right. Anybody else? What more does he have to do, or is that enough to be saved? It's more than enough. More than Ooh. enough. Mm. I agree with what John said. He's a smart man, say. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because right? we go back to our equation, right? We go back to our equation. Faith plus grace plus nothing, nothing equals salvation. All right, and and we're you know it's tempted like he's got to do at least get baptized you know you're not really saved until you get baptized I mean you hear that right is that true um, oh yes I don't I don't think that's true okay because the man on the cross probably wasn't baptized absolutely yes. not he threw some water to spit on yeah Jesus <laughs> you're clean all right super Sabbath change <laughs> So again, we're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna talk about this later in further classes. But of course, it's not a license 
I can do whatever I want now. I don't have to obey anything. And of course, we know that. But, you know, we'll explain that later. But that's the fear. You know, if that's all it takes to get saved, then they're going to just do whatever they want. They're going to be these sinners. And Sorry. So, all right. When will the person know for certain they're actually saved? When they're dead. They're when will they be <laughs> sure? All right. So they just, they just got out of the hood. They got all these you know, he's got hickeys on his neck. He's got tatted up. He just killed a fool a couple of days ago. And, you know, he's got all this stuff. And he walks up, I want you to save me. And he does it. How long does it take for him to know for certain? Or maybe, maybe just, maybe we, in his mind, it might take longer. But in God's eyes, for him to be saved, when? All right? How long? Let me ask you guys that. Same moment. Instantly. Okay, Josh says instantly. Anybody else? Kit, what do you think? Bad dude. She's stirring. Hawaiian dude. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to stab you in the eye. <laughs> Tongans aren't that bad. Hawaiians are the bad ones. Kim, what do you think? I out. think it's like Josh said, I think it's the first step. But for me personally, I feel like if you're going the right way that you want in your life, then eventually you will get baptized, just like the Bible tells sure. you to. Sure. No, okay. I, like so, I said, we're gonna we're gonna touch on that, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But when you saved That's the question. Well you already know my opinion about that, so Wait, I don't what? know it. She doesn't know it. We want to hear it. What is it? All right, so let us let me ask you a question before we get into that. Okay, uh, how long have you been baptized, Josh? Oh, man. <coughs> 17 years? 17 years? What, what are you, five when you did it? No, 10. 10. Oh, man. I don't think I We need to dunk him again. We need to dunk him again. That's like infant baptism. Oh <laughs> Wait, how, how long? 17. All right, so he's been baptized for 17 years. Uh, when do you think you knew you were saved, or when? Maybe you. Last when do you think? <laughs> well, well, everybody, everybody knew my opinion on. I was the same boat as Kimberly. Yeah. But ever since Super Sabbath, that's oh, when I got reassured. Like, all right, this is the real deal. So about seven days ago. Yeah, seven days ago. So he's been wow. seven, It took seventeen years and eight days. Yeah. Right? But it's not like it's not like like I wasn't I knew I wanted to be safe and I walked a good life, but truly I knew, hey, it's it's already written in the book. But I truly believe that and that was sad. Okay. Right, we just need one more. Alright, so <laughs> So the big question is, okay, this guy, like I say, he's bad. Worse than anybody here. Maybe. But, okay. He walks up and he says, you know, you said the sinner's prayer, I believe you died and rose again. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. I believe you are the Son of God. And, you know, when does he truly have salvation? Is it till 10 years and he stops doing, you know, or is, he, is it when he finally, you know, changes every part of his life you know when and that's a big question no, I, th I think i think it's at that moment okay because we're talking moment. about belief and you said it's a loaded word belief uh -huh. it's like and then it's like what we talked about the sermon about uh, uh how do you know jesus was real or the death of jesus uh-huh it's like like if we had the same if we have the same belief that belief that if somebody has a gun to our head it's like yes or no and you pick Yes, I still believe. Uh -huh. That's the belief you're talking about. Okay. Because even the even the um, what do you call it? disciples, they were hiding, and all of a sudden, their attitude changed that they would even go to death for it. Right. All right. Well, let's dive in, guys. Uh, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna settle this today. Kim, we're settling this. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna need you guys' help. We're gonna be looking at some verses. The first one is John chapter five, verse twenty-four. You can look, turn there, and let's let's inspect it. Here's what we're looking for. Where does it? Is there any signs of assurance? All right, reading these. Is there any any hints, any signs the Bible gives us 
that a person can be sure of their salvation and when. Jerson, if you have any complaints, send it in a letter. Okay? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right? Here we go. John chapter 5, 24. Who's, who's who wants to read it? Anybody? Elmer, thank you. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Okay. Who? Anybody have any idea who's speaking? Come on. That's Jesus. The Lord. <laughs> Jesus. He's speaking. All right. He's speaking. I thought this was an interesting verse because he, uh, he hadn't died yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Uh, so, uh, Elmer, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever, all right, whoever, and that's a loaded one too, hears my word and <clears throat> believes him who sent me, believes God who sent Jesus, has eternal life, all right, has, what kind of uh, pr um, present tense, future tense, what is this? It's perfect present. Perfect present. Uh, I was trying to figure that out, I thought, man, I should spend too long since I've been to school. Perfect present, has eternal life, he does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life, all right, so according to this verse, when can a person be sure they are saved, all right? You're not gonna get you're not gonna get judged to death. You're gonna pass from death to life when? Not Jerson, anybody else. In the perfect present. In the perfect present, which is right, right then. Whenever this was written, if anyone believed, bada bing, bada boom, you're in. Alright? Is bada that bing, bada boom, is okay? that is that true? Or not? Or is this a spelling error in the Greek? Hey, he's studying it. He said no. All right, let's read that again. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. All right, is there any signs of assurance? All right, looking at the grammar, perfect present tense. Has, not, will have, will have at some point, 10 years after they've been baptized. You know, once they really understand theology properly. Um, when? All right? Belief. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. I think that's the coolest part. Yes, sir. I think it's pretty cool that also he covers the people after his death, or during his time and after his death, and then also the people before him. Yeah, that was, that was a, because like I said, this was before he died. Um, because he says, uh... Whoever hears my words and believes, uh, whoever hears my words and believes who sent me, so even the people that never met him or were looking towards the promise of God are saved. Yeah, like Abraham. Mm -hmm. Deep stuff. Eesh. Okay. All right, so when? All right, that's our big question. And I got six verses we're going to look at. When? All right, so this person is over here on death's side, and this is life with Jesus. All right, they accept salvation. How long does it take for them to cross over? <coughs> How long? Even before you say nanoseconds. Nanoseconds. All right. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. All right. I think that's the coolest part. When you believe it, you're transferred Mexico, United States. What the fuck? Nah, not that bad. <laughs> you're immediately a citizen. When you believe it, truly, when you believe it, you pass from death into life. All right? Amazing. Amazing. Doesn't it, it doesn't discriminate on what you've done? None of that. It says there's one requirement I need you to have faith. Faith in Jesus. All right, we talked about that last time as the object of your faith. All right, so here's just one verse. All right, transferred from death to life when? Immediately. All right, so somebody sitting here in this room, at some, if they heard the gospel, they were dead in their sins. When they died and went to judgment day, they were going to hell for certain. One sin is all it takes. But at the moment they believe, you're, you're in. You know, you're, you're 
totally forgiven. You're into life eternal. All right, hard. It may be hard for some of us. To take. It was hard for me to take. Okay, got it. But once you realize how wretched you are, you will change your mind. All right, let's look at another one. And if you guys have any questions, just bring them up. First John five eleven to thirteen. I'll need somebody else to read it. Julia, please. And this is a testimony that God gave us eternal life. Wait, did I say that? Right? Yeah, yeah, that God gave us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. All right, so let me ask you, Julia, is there any signs of assurance in this verse? Would you know, any, any word does it tell you that you can know that you really are saved? You can have assurance. Where? Give us something. Yeah, I was going to say, God gave us eternal life. Ooh, okay, gave us eternal life right here in verse 11. And this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. And whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. All right, any other portions that stand out to you? Stand out to anyone else? Jerson in the back. Hi. Yeah, the, what stands out to me is has given. Where's that? Well, it's 11, um, verse 11. That God, it says gave us, but mine says has given. Has given. So it's already. It's already done. It's already done. And it's interesting, too, that it's already given, but we have to make a selection. It takes, it. <laughs> it takes us taking it, accepting it, wanting it. Hmm. Loaded question. There you go. <laughs> okay, but yes, yes, yes. It ta you, you have to... You have to believe it, okay? And again, what that is, we're going to talk about that later. There's different, there's different <laughs> thoughts on that, but I don't want to get into that today. That's a whole nother. Whoever has, all right, and listen to this last part. That you may know that you have eternal life. That you can know. All right, the whole reason why he wrote this letter, he's telling us, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you can know you have eternal life. So you got to know it. All right? And he, John, the brother of Jesus, wanted his readers to know they had eternal life. So the question we're asking ourselves is, how do we know? And do you know? And there is proof that you can know. And it relies upon all of this. That God gave us, and this life is in His Son, and whoever has the Son has life. Okay? So, any questions on that one? As far as assurance, John says that you can know. One is that when you believe, you passed over. You were in the grave, and now you're in life. Eternal. Alright, let me show you another set. <coughs> Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. I'll let Jesse read this one. <coughs> I got it up here if you're interested. <coughs> We're looking for signs of assurance. When can you get saved? At what moment in time? Is it 10 years after baptism? Is it one year after salvation? Does it take a few days for it to kick in? Like you drink a coffee and it takes 30 minutes for the, <coughs> you know, the caffeine to get you going? Is that how it works with salvation? Read it for us. Uh, Ephesians 2.8 For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing, for it is the gift of God. Just, just two, oh, and nine. Okay, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. All right, so if you're wondering, man, when the heck am I really saved? You read this verse, what would you, what would help you understand when? For by grace you have. Ooh, what is this? What kind of tense is this one? Have been. Have been. Is that past Have been, yeah. Have been, okay. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing, it is a gift of God. It's already done. Alright, that's what it's saying. It's already done. But the grace, the faith, it's done. You're saved. 
hard to take. Oh, man, I gotta do something here <laughs> to help God out a little at least. I mean, what you your your grace is certainly not enough. I need to do something. I don't know. We're gonna talk about that. <clears throat> this was a big issue for me. It took me years to get this. Like I said, I always felt I I never really had assurance. Not until that Hillsong conference when I was awakened. <laughs> like I said, uh, this you know, I I said in the first class that when they they were singing a song, the aftermath, and they were singing, and I know you're with me, and they were singing it out, and I was I was just wrecked. What <laughs> the? How can you know that? <laughs> I was serious, man, and I just started. I want that, and I said, Yes, <laughs> I know it. <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm serious, the feeling to know for sure, I had never felt that. Maybe the day I got baptized, but after I sinned a few times after that, I was like, mm, this is risky. <laughs> I don't know if I, you know, every week was just, it, I just, it, who knew, you know? <laughs> for by grace you have been saved, all right? At the moment, the other verses we read, at that moment you pass from death to life. Maybe you don't believe it, but God has already done it. It's just, you've got to catch up. <clears throat> All right, Romans 10, 9. Uh, Sione, would you mind? Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. All right, any thoughts if you were wondering when? Ooh. When you confess with your mouth. From the verse, you know, does it give us any hints of when? We can read yeah, ten. when you confess. Believe in your heart. We can read ten. And right here. Yeah. You will be saved. Read ten, go ahead. Oh, really? All right, go ahead. For with Thank the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Thank you. And is saved. Thank you. All right, so when, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, when will you be saved? At that point, you will, you will be saved. You've got to really trust that that's true. Because you're going to want to do certain things just to be sure. You know, it's a difference when you do things to be sure and when you do things because you know you're sure, yeah, that's, that's a total different game. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> but that's me. All right, that was me for my whole life. I'm telling you. All right, we we got only a few minutes left, but let's talk about the last two. All right, Ephesians 1, 13 to fourteen. All right, biblical proof of salvation. Uh, somebody else read it for us. Kim, you want to get it? Right here. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. All right, Kim. It's missing a word. In him you also trusted. Different depends on the version. In him you also? Depends on the ESV version. It's it's tied to verse twelve. But yeah, it's trusted. Yeah. Okay, him you also trusted. Kim, <laughs> now give us your thoughts. When will the person know they're really saved? Just from this verse. I underlined a few hits. Yeah, so you kind of the whole thing. Well, give us one of your, <laughs> what do you think? According to this verse, Paul writing to heathen Gentiles. When were they actually saved? <coughs> Filthy <coughs> sinners. <coughs> Filthy sinners, <coughs> telling you. Probably Hawaiian. Just saying. Just tell me the reason. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You have Hawaiian We have viewers, okay? When? In him also when? When you heard. 
the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and what? And you believed it in Him. <coughs> believed in Him. You were sealed. Sealed. All right, so when did this all occur? First, some gospel message, whatever this gospel message was, seeped into this guy's ear. All right, got in there. And then he actually believed it. And at the moment, you were sealed. All right, now, little seal signifies ownership. Uh, it's like the king, they had a ring where they put on their letters. They write it, seal it, and it's definitely from him. Yes, sir, in the back. It's also the same word for branding. Branding. Even with, like you do on a cow, you put your name on it. You've been branded, all right? At the moment, at that moment, you were branded, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. When did you get the Holy Spirit? Excuse me. Did you have to wait until you did something else? You have to ask for it. You had to ask specifically for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a gift from God. So when do you get the Holy Spirit? When you when you get saved or when you ask for it? When you ask for it. So not when you get saved. It isn't. Is that what this verse says? <laughs> uh, read the verse again. Hey, don't trip him up. He's in the beginning. Says, wait, 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 says, wait, wait, read it. Go ahead. It says with the promise. Okay. The yes, yes. What does that say? You were sealed, sealed with, it. with it. Okay, so let me let's read it slow. In Him, Jesus. <laughs> When you, you also, when you trusted, when you heard the word of truth, the right, the gospel of your salvation, and you believed it, and then you asked for the Holy Spirit. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the footnotes. Read it, Josh. Read it, Josh. It's in the footnotes. Yeah, that's where it is. Right the footnotes. Oh, that's where it is. <laughs> I got it back. Yeah. yeah. When you believed it, Traitor. you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. The promise. With the pro who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire <laughs> possession of it to the praise of His glory. <laughs> Alright? So who is the seal? Who is the guarantee? So why does God even give you the Holy Spirit? At least from this particular verse, one reason is because the Holy Spirit seals the deal. Alright? It guarantees that is definitely my son. He is ugly, but he's mine. You know, whatever it is. The Holy Spirit seals. You didn't have you didn't have to wait a week after you were saved and then God, now I'm ready. Give it to me. No. No, no, no. It's a gift. Salvation is a gift. The Holy Spirit comes right along with the gift of salvation. To change you, to seal you. You're in. That's one way you can know. Is that you have the Holy Spirit. Because if you do, that's a sign that God sealed you Himself. God Himself is living in you. Alright, last verse, then we're out of here. Romans 8, 16. Actually, the other one was good too. But Romans 8, 16. Uh, anybody? Hannah, you want to get it for us? The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Comma. All right. So how can you know if or when you're saved? No. <laughs> the Spirit bears witness with your spirit. So you, something inside of you is speaking. You're saved, brother. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't ask. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and what we're trying to understand is, when is a person saved? How do you know? You know, and, and that it is like you said. Even in this room, there's debates, and there has been. I would have, I would have been probably worse than everybody here at one point because I just couldn't take it. No, no, no. If one, they cannot be saved until they've adhered to the Ten Commandments. They certainly have to start changing their ways and go to church on the Sabbath. You know, they have to do all these things before they can be sure. You know, and that's the question. And again, we're going to get into it to where, okay, they're saved. Now you can go continue being a prostitute. No, no, that's not how it works. You know, so that's, that's what we're going to talk about. All right, but the Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. At the moment you believed. 
All right. So, and I, and what we're going to talk about next is that the problem isn't that God couldn't do it. I think the problem is, is that we don't fully trust it. We don't fully trust that what God's grace is enough. All right. That's the problem. It's not that you know, we think, again, this little word believed for all of us think that is not enough. But you, you can't imagine how important that is. And what God can do with faith. Even a little mustard seed, how bigger it is. You know, it's all it takes. He can ta- and He can take a dead person out of the grave and bring them into eternal life. And it, and it happens at the moment you believe. So the issue is that we're all having, uh, and that we brought up the last time, is that people go up to the altars, big concerts, say, raise your hand, uh, at, and you're saved. And... A lot of people raise their hand and then they go forth for the rest of their life. Well, I raise my hand. I am certainly saved. So the question we ask is, are they really? And it, and it, we're taking a whole few weeks to get to that point. But we know how a person is saved and how is when faith enters their heart and God supplies the grace. By faith you have been saved through grace and this is not of your own works. You're saved. You have the Holy Spirit. You still sin. Yes, you're a work in progress. But from the day, from this day, from the day you believe, you can have joy. And I think that's where that's where the issue is. And I'll leave you with this uh, last one. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Just read this bottom verse. This is talking about the armor of God. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation. All right? For some of us, I was thinking about this. For some of us, you know the little cupcake holders, the little things? For some of us, our helmet of salvation is that little cupcake (laughs) holder. You know, and they just say, eh. (laughs) The enemy will just flick it off. (laughs) <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> you don't believe. <laughs> you know? Some of us, our salvation is very, very... Uh, what's the word? Weak. 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 Yes. And, and it, for two reasons. Maybe we don't fully trust it, or maybe we're not all that committed. So, for some of us, the helmet of salvation is just a little umbrella that you have on your tequilas or something. Or what is it? Uh, not that any of us drink that. Margaritas. All right? That's your helmet. Little thing. Because you're trusting in your own works. But when you, but Paul is saying to wear the helmet of salvation like you're going to war. You know, like the Romans did this fooly thing all steel. Ready to roll. And that is not coming off. You know, like we do with the climbing. We put a little thing under our head. It's not, it's secure. It's secure and it will protect you. So the goal for us is to make sure your helmet is on straight because right now I think we're, we're, some of us are, are there, but it's taken me years again. So again, you know, if you, if you had the opportunity to invite someone to believe, you better be sure that at the moment they do believe. If you, get, if you pray the prayer with them, they're in. If, if, if they were sincere... If they had the faith, God will supply the grace, and they're in. And uh, and for you guys too today, you know, you're going to worship. We're going to be singing some songs. You know, if you're saying, "I don't know," you're with me. You know, <laughs> I don't know. But God says He is, and He says, "If you trust in Me, I am with you, and I will give you eternal life." And you can be certain of that, more than on your, you know, anything else. So. Again, this is only this is class number three. We got like four more. We're gonna get into some heated stuff starting next week. Um, so just to prep you. So if you have any issues, like I said, Josh on YouTube complained to him, uh, and we'll move forward. Let's pray and we'll roll out.